Hey guys, Brannis here with the new December 30th auto chess patch notes. Let's get into it. First, we've got the buffs. The duration of the Greater Synergy's spatial imprisonment is being increased from 1.5 seconds to 2 seconds. The Frantic Mask rework earlier this fall single-handedly made Greater go from a strong but inconsistent build to a completely unplayable build. Since then, it has received three consecutive buffs. Won't bore you with the exact details on the math, but these buffs add up to be a pretty significant change when you compare it to the pre-frantic rework numbers. I think that this change is something that might go overlooked in this patch, and I definitely think that Greater deserves to be revisited at this point to see if it can make some waves in the new metagame. Shadow Devil's ultimate Requiem of Shadow will deal an additional 50 magic damage at all star levels. Shadow Devil has been pretty irrelevant in the metagame since his rework. I think that the main reason why is his ultimate encourages you to frontline him to maximize its effectiveness, but his low health combined with the long startup channel time for his spell leads to him being killed before casting most of the time. The prevalence of Dwarf 2 in the early game has definitely exploited this weakness very effectively. I think making Dwarf 2 less accessible early in the game could indirectly buff him in a much more meaningful way than this magic damage buff will. Gem Artisan's ultimate Gemstone Wave will deal an additional 50 pure damage at all star levels. This seems like a pretty random buff to me. It's a slight buff to 6 mech and 2 insect civet in the current metagame, uh, and it also makes Gem Artisan 3 star much scarier than before. Fallen Witcher is receiving an additional 10, 20, and 40 base attack damage. Fallen Witcher doesn't really see a lot of usage at the moment, so I think this is a pretty solid buff for him. The scale's really nasty at 3 star in particular, being a net plus 60 damage per hit after you account for demon bonus. Fortune Teller's ultimate life extensions duration is being increased from 4 seconds to 5 seconds at all star levels. There's some cool plays that you can make with Fortune Teller's bubble, so I think it's nice to see him get some love. But theoretically, this duration increase causes a threshold change with a cooldown reduction. So if you have Divinity 4 with two Orb of Regens on a Priest, the cooldown should be less than the duration of the bubble now. Ice Plate Mail's enemy attack speed slow is being increased from 15% to 25%. This seems like a reasonable change. Blade Bracer's taken the spotlight recently as the standout premier tank item. The 10% decrease in enemy attack speed should help offset the loss of the evasion since the coin change a couple patches ago. This will probably be pretty comical early in combination with Unicorn 2 stars passive though. Ice Armor's active enemy attack speed slow is being increased from 30% to 50%. This is a nice buff to Ice Armor for 9 mage builds. Nine Mage abuses Ice Armor pretty hard, but it doesn't see a ton of play outside of that build at the moment. I think this has more to do with how much Crimson Heart has been buffed in the last few months than any lack of power in Ice Armor, though. Speaking of which, Crimson Heart's proc is being increased from a 35% chance on hit received to a 50% chance on hit received. When I first read this change, I had to do a double take. They've repeatedly buffed this item for a couple of seasons now. It was initially released at a 20% proc chance, and no one was really building it. Since they've buffed it all the way to 35%, Crimson Herd is now the best tank item in the game. Raising it by another 15% on top of that seems pretty overkill to me. I think they should raise the internal cooldown on the proc, or lower the healing and damage output if they really want the proc chance to be this high. This looks pretty absurd on paper, but I hope I'm wrong. If you've made it this far into the video, I would greatly appreciate it if you would consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel. We're really close to hitting a thousand subscribers before the end of the year. Up next, we've got some hefty nerfs coming. Six Agurus' post-death zombie timer is being reduced from 5 seconds to 3.5 seconds. This is a huge nerf to Six Agurus' ability to steal round wins and mitigate their health loss. The zombie timer has seen countless changes over the last year in small adjustments and tweaks, but I think this is the lowest that it's ever been at. Dragonite's ultimate resonance is losing 0, 25, and 50 of its bonus damage after transforming. 
I think this is a relatively small nerf to DK. As the meta developed over this patch, I think a lot of players started to realize that while DK used Splitter pretty effectively in the early and mid game, Shining Assassin was actually the most effective Splitter user in the late game. I think Drodo is just trying to cover all of their bases in nerfing Six Agurus on this patch though, so it's not that huge. Split Arrows additional projectiles are being reduced from 30% attack damage to 25% attack damage. And Burst Rifle is having the additional Dwarf Synergy effect removed from it. I think an item giving Dwarf 2 as early as round 4 was pretty absurd, so I'm glad to see it being removed from the small splitter. As far as the big splitter goes, upgrading splitter gives you one additional projectile and 10% increased damage for the additional projectiles. It already had significant competition for Dragon Axe usage with the Cure Glove, and I think this change increases that further. Splitter felt pretty balanced at 30% for several seasons now, but I think it would make more sense to adjust the units that abuse it the most, like Shining Assassin, Cannon Granny, and DK, rather than targeting the item itself. Glacier is being adjusted. Based on the wording given in the patch notes here, Glacial buff will now only affect your Glacial units at all tiers, not your entire team. Glacier 2 will still give 20% attack speed. Glacier 4 presumably doesn't exist now. And Glacial 6 will now only require 5 units, but it will give 8% attack speed per stack, down from the 15% per stack it currently gives. Again, given that my interpretation of the wording here is correct, I think this guts Glacier pretty badly. It seems pretty out of left field to me. Six Glacial hasn't been particularly relevant in the last season or two now, and has a pretty low pick rate at the moment. Two Glacier is still very accessible, but it seems pretty pointless. Five Glacier seems niche. Maybe there's some kind of warrior Glacial build with Sacred Lancer carry that could work, but I'm doubtful of that. As far as my overall thoughts on this patch go, the big highlights were definitely the huge nerfs to every aspect of Six Agurus's. I think they probably over-nerfed the build, and it might not be relevant at all after this patch. The Glacial rework seems really odd, which makes me wonder if there might be some kind of error there. In general, I think the builds that will see the most success out of this patch are builds that have a really tanky unit, but were otherwise relatively unchanged by the patch. So my prediction is that 9 Feathered, Insects, and 9 Warriors should all be pretty strong options coming out of this patch here. But let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree with my thoughts on any of these changes. And if you disagree, make sure to let me know why. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later, gamers.